Hi, my name is Dr. Sarah Nick Rivon with the Division of Cardiothoracic Anesthesiology and Critical Care Medicine at Virginia Mason Medical Center. And uh, I am going to have the opportunity to talk to you today about lung ultrasound. This is going to be a five-part series where we're going to go through normal lung and then talk about other areas in lung pathology, such as consolidation, pleural effusions, pneumothorax. Uh, what we call interstitial syndrome, and we're going to go through these segment by segment. And uh, just as we get started, we're going to go through the layout of the talks here today. We're going to give you a little bit of background on lung ultrasound, talk about chest wall anatomy, and then dive into what normal lung ultrasound looks like. From there, the series will go on to talk about pneumothoraces and how to differentiate between normal lung sliding and uh, a patient who may have a pneumothorax. We'll talk about pleural effusions, interstitial syndrome, consolidation, and then just to wrap everything up together, we'll go over a case. I did want to uh, just share with you this expert panel that was released back in 2012 talking about the evidence uh, behind the recommendations for point of care lung ultrasound. And if you get a chance on your own time to review this uh, article, this expert panel review, I think it would be very helpful to understand a number of the things that we're going to talk about. The first question you have to ask yourself is what kind of probe are you going to use? Uh, are you going to use this phased array cardiac transducer, which will give you a certain level of penetration, but may not give you the best axial resolution. And what axial resolution is, is when structures are on top of each other, you can visualize them a little bit better. And that is imaging that is oftentimes most optimal with a linear or vascular probe that has a higher frequency uh, signal, less penetration, but gives you very crisp images of structures that are on top of each other. The curvilinear abdominal transducer is one that is of the lowest frequency, gives you the uh, most penetration, oftentimes used for evaluation of organs, such as the liver, or the kidneys. And you can use, honestly, any of these probes to do lung ultrasound examinations certain probes may give you better image quality, and I'll try to address that as we move through the different pathologies uh, that we're going to cover here. The next step really in being able to perform a lung ultrasound is to have a scanning protocol, and there are different protocols out there. The one that I have delineated here is a four-segment protocol on each side of the chest. You have your parasternal line, your anterior axillary line, and then you have a posterior axillary line here in the back, and you draw one line under the nipple around the, the fifth intercostal space. You'll be able to have four quadrants on each side of the chest. Quadrant one, which is your anterior upper quadrant. Quadrant two, which is your anterior lower quadrant. Quadrant three, which is your more lateral or post-lateral and posterior upper quadrant and quadrant four, which is your more lateral um, lower quadrant. On this patient, this would be the right side of the chest. And if you did the same on the other side, that would be the left side of the chest. So make sure that when you're doing your exam and you're acquiring your images, that you label your images because the right side of the chest or the lung oftentimes looks like the left side of the chest or the lung when you're looking at lung ultrasound. Um, and it's harder to know where you found pathology if you haven't lab labeled your images up front. As a precursor to normal lung pathology, I think it's good for us to understand what chest wall anatomy actually is and what it looks like. You see here when you're looking at the chest wall, there's a layer of subcutaneous tissue or skin and subcutaneous tissue that's first uh, encountered by the ultrasound beam. And as you move down the chest, you have the pectoralis muscles, the major minor muscles, and sometimes the serratus anterior that will pop into view on your uh, image. Beyond that, you see the ribs and this intercostal muscle space here where the intercostal muscles attach the ribs to each other. Um, and beyond that, you'll see the pleural line and then the lung itself. Normal lung is a mixture of air and water. 
And there is a difference in acoustic impedance between these elements that generates ultrasound artifacts. The disturbance in this air-water balance underlines lung disease, and that produces a pattern of artifact that changes from normal. And that is really what we're trying to do with lung ultrasonography is evaluate and analyze artifacts and how they change with pathology. I really like this image because it shows you a nice transition from what you would expect anatomy to look like and how that anatomy is portrayed on ultrasound. And you see here at the top, the soft tissue and the skin is portrayed. Uh, the pectoralis muscles underlie the soft skin and tissues. And then once you get to the ribs, you see this very dark, uh, bony structure that doesn't allow for the transmission of ultrasound beam um, and produces the shadow artifact below it here. That's how you know you're looking at bone. And between the ribs, you have the intercostal muscles and then this bright, bright pleural line. And this is one of the things that you're really focusing on in lung ultrasound because it will help generate artifacts that you're going to see later. Below the pleural line is the lung. When you're evaluating the pleural line, you'll see the pleural line as this delineation between uh, the chest wall and the lungs. It's very hyperechoic or bright, and it's typically about five millimeters below the rib line. The pleural line will produce this artifact. It's a re reverberation artifact um, moving down into the lungs that are called A lines. The pleural line is here at the top. And then you see the reverberations of the pleural lines demonstrated as A lines all the way down your ultrasound image. Now, normal lungs will have a, a pleural line that we'll see here, and you can actually evaluate the lung sliding or that pleural line sliding back and forth. You can evaluate that with your eye as we're looking at it right now. You can see the lung sliding back and forth. And in addition to that, to help assist your eye in its evaluation, you can put M mode or what's called motion mode over that pleural line to assess the motion of the pleural line in the lung as it relates to the more static chest wall and the subcutaneous structures of the chest. So when you're looking at this M mode, portions that look very static are the ones that are not moving, which would be the top portions of your chest wall to include the subcutaneous tissue and um, the intercostal muscles. And then once you get to the pleural line here, you'll see that the pleural line is moving back and forth and that creates a smudging or a motion artifact that you are able to see in the lower parts of this M mode image. This is what we call the Sandy Beach sign. And if you were able to assess, you would put a picture of a of a beach with sand over this, and you could see how the bottom portions of this image look like the sand that you're standing on and you're looking at the ocean or the water beyond. And this is a normal uh, M mode for normal lung sliding. So this is the M mode that you would see in normal lung sliding is the sandy beach sign. Now we're gonna move on in this next segment to talk about pneumothoraces and how that may differ from your evaluation of normal lung. I wanted to take one moment to discuss some technical details. If you notice, the orientation marker is on the right-hand side of the screen in this image. The reason why you're seeing it this way is that this exam was started as a cardiac exam and it's under the cardiac preset. And the orientation for cardiac imaging with ultrasound is for the orientation marker to be on the right-hand side of the screen. This is the only time in ultrasound where that orientation marker is on the right-hand side of the screen. And every other uh, ultrasound evaluation, whether it's a, a lung preset or it's an abdominal preset or a vascular preset, that orientation marker moves to the left-hand side of the screen. This is just the classic difference between the acquisition of cardiac imaging versus other uh, imaging in ultrasound. 
Now, I'll move to an example of where the image was acquired under a pulmonary preset, where the orientation marker now has moved to the left-hand side of the screen. And you see now that the lung is on the left-hand side of the image and the liver is on the right-hand side of the image. I don't want you to be confused by this. I just want to point out that the only reason why this exists is because the exam was performed under a cardiac preset that flips the image so that what you're looking at normally in an abdominal preset or lung preset will just shift 180 degrees and now be flipped to where the lung is on the right and the liver is on the left as opposed to the lung being on the left and the liver on the right. I hope that this helps clear that up as we move through these series of talks so that you can understand why the orientation of structures may be different. It just depends on the preset of which the exam was performed. Now we're gonna move on in this next segment to talk about pneumothoraces and how that may differ from your evaluation of normal lungs.